here in the cooking classroom at the co-op, and you got a little class here, and tell me what's going to happen today. Today we're um, working, uh, we are cooking with a class called Kids Teach Kids How to Cook. And this okay. was the idea of my friend Cara. And also a, another boy last month did his version of what he wanted to cook. And so Cara has been saying, I would like to teach a cooking class, Lizzie. And she's been helping me behind the counter and different events downstairs that we've done at the demo desk. Okay. And so here we are. Teach kids, teach kids how to cook. Number two with Cara Fisher. The thing that she would like to cook today is steak and potatoes. Steak, steak and, and mashed potato. potatoes. And then we're going to learn how to cook steak some of the different kinds of steaks that there are, how to tell when a steak is done, and we're going to cut some potatoes and boil some potatoes, do some mashed potatoes with butter, and then just so that we always have something green, I'm going to teach them how to cut a broccoli and steam broccoli to perfection. You don't believe that, Margaret? It should be your main meal. Protein. Like, and Margaret, we eat like a lamb for can supper. I, okay, can I ask you why? Because you, where do you live? On a farm. Okay, and you have different animals? We have uh, two goats, one horse, one dog, two cats, one rabbit. And An older brother, the pig. Yeah. No, you have a pig, not your brother. You my, have a real pig. <laughs> my grandparents raise a pig and then we butcher it and... This year we butchered our own lambs. So you butchered the lamb and then you make what, lamb chops? Yeah, we made um, we made sausage out of one old lamb. And then the two young ones, the yearlings, we made like leg like of lamb. And yummy and wh things like what that. about the pigs? The pigs, we make bacon and ham and everything imaginable. And I you don't pay you attention to that very much. You like to eat that stuff? Yes. I love to eat that stuff. Okay, we have something to come. I'm going to stop, right? It's a beautiful piece of beef loin, top sirloin steak. And it has, if you can see, it has some beautiful streaks of fat. This is called marbling, and this is what's going to give it its delicious flavor. So I want to show you how to cook this. And as I show you how to cook this, if you can use your thumb, is going to tell you how done or not done your steak is. So let me just show you. If you go like this, do an L, and feel here, that means that the steak is well done. This is how it would feel like if mm. you press it. The taut part? Yeah. Okay. If you go mi middle, halfway through, Oh, this is I what medium size, medium is this. Oh. And then if you put it together, this is raw or very undercooked. So if you feel this feel and you same. feel this, it's the same. So one thing that chefs do and cooks do in the restaurant is that they feel the food. They feel it on top of the stove, on the saute pan, to know whether it's done or not. So when you put the steak in the pan, after a few minutes, you feel it, and if it feels like this, it's raw inside still. If it feels like this, it's starting to get more cooked. And if you want it well done, it would feel like this. And we're going to practice that together. Well done, medium, and there's a muscle there, so it gets hard. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be two one-inch cubes like this so that they cook faster. Okay. So Lizzie, well, I missed that, but you said you peeled these potatoes that are in the water. We peeled these potatoes. These are purple potatoes, red, I'm sorry, red potatoes. They're very creamy and they're sweet. These are Yukon gold potatoes. These are more yellowy, very sweet as well. And they hold together much better, these Yukon gold. Okay. So these have to be cut using a knife and these have to be peeled and cut. So that's the task of this station here. And then over here in the broccoli, um, I would like whoever is here to just take a knife. And when you're holding a knife, go out like that, like you're about to give someone your hand. 
And then that's how you hold the knife. A lot of people hold their knife mm -hmm. with the finger on top here. Um, it's not my recommendation because your finger can slip and then it'll end up underneath the blade. So just hold the knife as if you are holding someone's hand. If you hold it too hard, you're going to use much more strength than you really need. And you better need, use your strength for eating, not necessarily <laughs> chopping. So you hold the knife like this and it should be light. And then um, oftentimes what I like to do is make sure that whatever I'm cooking is flat. So it's not rolling around towards Jerusalem. So I'll do the same thing here when I'm cutting potatoes. I'll take a potato, cut it in half, flat. Once it's flat, then I can re it won't be moving around. So when you take the potato, cut it in half. See how you use the angle, this Put angle? Yeah. To, to really cut it up into pieces. This one, you might do more. You might take it in half and then more. So with the broccoli... Mm. I put it on flat. And sometimes I like to just steam it like this and start to separate these little trees from each other. One, two, three. And you're using and the base part. Just you're using this. You're not cutting them free of that. No, you're you're, I, mean, I love this part. It's so, yes. so delicious. And so, that's my right. favorite. Part. The stock. Yeah. yeah. And then if you want to do more, you can actually um, bring it flat again like this so that it's not twirling around. Get it to its flat and then you just cut it into like a little rectangle, the sides like this. And then this is really delicious to eat as well. Cut it into pieces like that so that this piece is more or less equal to the stock. And then so that all of this will cook together. This method I learned from my friend in Arizona, which is just to boil a big pot of water, add a little salt, have your broccoli ready. When the water comes to a boil, poof, all the broccoli inside the water, put the lid on, turn off the water, six minutes, perfect broccoli. Really? Okay. I think that's small enough. Can you do the next one? Ah, the broccoli is getting a little weird. Yeah. In this case, I would put it on its flattest side and just put my hand on top run. of it. Yeah, in this case, I would put my hand on top. There's going to be one humongous chunk. <laughs> the rest are going to be tiny. Keep going, just rock it. Okay. Now you can turn them. And use your bare claw or yeah. Now she suggested a grab, not a push with that finger. She wanted you to hold handshake it and not use that finger. Move your hand up. That's hard. It is hard, but you can do it. I like doing that. And she did explain why. Alright, the story that I heard was that does anyone know what the most dangerous utensil in the kitchen is a dull knife a dull knife exactly because you can use so much force and, and then, then it, it slips that's, that's right i didn't mean to put words in your mouth but that's exactly correct a lot of people don't know that they guess other things and it's a dull knife it can be super dangerous yes sharp knives are pretty dangerous but dull knives they're that's right. That's a good point. It's not like sharp knives are not dangerous. It's even more dangerous than a dull knife is a little kid with a sharp knife. With a what? Sharp knife. Oh, well, little kids shouldn't have sharp knives, I don't the think. The fire, the, the stove is also pretty dangerous. Though. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful in the kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen is one of like the most dangerous places. You're starting that water cold, I'm noticing. Yeah, yeah. If you start the water cold, um, then the potatoes will slowly cook from the 
it'll cook slowly instead of being shocked into hot water and then they're like oh, really? so mm. if you if you cook them slowly then they'll cook faster you and then it's creamier faster when you cook go you'll figure about, okay you start you with cold water they cook and... faster that does i heard my mom say that when you i was wouldn't little ever think of that naturally you you think about a food as humans <laughs> you always think about what it's feeling <laughs> A shocked potato. Nice cutting it. Cover on the potatoes again, please. Now, what did you say about you started them in cold water, and why did you do that? Um, so that they slowly heat up. They heat up as the water heats up, and so they gently get to cook, and that makes them just a little bit smoother. Okay. And creamier. And they'll be good with butter on them. And the way you know they're done is? And the way that I, I, I start to look at the quality of the water, see how it's still pretty light? As it cooks, it'll leach out more and more of the starch. And then uh, once it comes to a boil, I leave it by three or four minutes, and then I get it. And then, Cara, do you want to come and season the steak? Can everyone come and season a little bit of the steak? So let's look at the recipe. What does the recipe say about seasoning the steak? Because it's good to season the steak before you cook it, like a, like 10 or 15 minutes, so that the, the, the meat has a... So Is that one bowl? That's one, one, one teaspoon, mm -hmm. so half of that. That's, uh, that's not half. A little bit less. A bit less. I think that's about three fourths. Just move, think about it like that. That's easier to see half, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Whoopa! Oh, go ahead, throw it on. It's all right. <laughs> and so you, yeah, you can actually spr just sprinkle it like that. Mm -hmm. And a little pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. So, and then you can put it like do like this, Cara. When you have the measurement, go like that, and use your fingers. Less than a half. Um. So see how quickly that came to a boil. Oh wow! Did you guys ever watch Essence of Emerald? Oh yeah. Well, he doesn't use a measuring spoon. He just throws it on and he goes, let's kick it up a notch. That's experience. Yeah. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how you learn. Nice car. See how it's that much? No, but just people, some people need. Oh, this is the guidance. hand of experience here. <laughs> Isabella doesn't want to see the steak. I'm going to start with <laughs> she's barring her eyes. She lives on a farm. Yeah. She's going to like meat like that. She'll eat it, but she doesn't want to see so much of it. And then, Cara, there's some um, purple. You don't touch it, nothing. For a few minutes, like three to five minutes. Well, how close are those potatoes getting to come out? Nice and soft? I think so. Oh, this sounds good over here. Carl, you're ready? Oh, let's do the summer test. Yeah, it's very hot, so you're just going to go and touch and notice. This is still pretty raw. I'm going to turn it over. All right, it's pretty raw. That's how the chef really cook it with their hands. Can I just to see, Cara, how I can just pick it up now? Whoa! That 
It's a beautiful sight. Can I take this to play with it? Let's see. Okay, ready. Getting ready. Yes, yeah, ready. Would you like to get it? Drink some of the water. the broccoli to the boiling water. Put your mom on here. Maybe we'll wait. Wait a second. She'll be right there. Very peppery. So far, are you ready? Okay, so this is it. The boiling water is ready. Mm -hmm. You just dump all of it in there. Okay. Turn it off. Oh, it did turn right. Did it around? save as many vitamins doing it this way as seeing it? Uh, it's What makes your mouth salivate when all this good food is cooking? Mine won't stop. Just saw it. If there's none in there. Oh, sorry. We just read the label. Mm -hmm. You said you were cutting against the grain. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? Um, I think it is easier to chew, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Easier to chew. The contrast gives it. It's easier to chew. You go first. You're the guest of honor. Take your plate and serve yourself a little bit of everything so you can, can taste hold the you plate in one hand. She this likes steak. Favorite. This is your favorite. We don't see this at home. <laughs> right, what's next here? We used to call this concrete. Is there a glass going on in here? Two, five. Uh, we're almost done. All right, maybe not. I'll be in later on the night. Thank you very much. Perfect. And here's your cutlery, Cara. Can I 
try some of each and eat anything. You can try anything. Please try everything. All right, guys, how is it? Pretty good? Yeah, really good. No one's talking, so that's a good sign. It is delicious. All right. It's exactly how I like it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. really good. Here we go. There's one thing that